I'm a pretty massive fan of uh, popular feminists, and yesterday I was lucky enough to stumble upon the combined opinion of two of my absolute favorites. These two being Jessica Valenti and Hillary Clinton. To give a bit of an explanation about why I just love these two so much, Hillary Clinton, my favorite quote of hers is, uh, well, I mean, I'm paraphrasing a bit over here, but I'll, I'll put up a, a screenshot of the actual thing. Women have uh, always been the primary victims of war because uh, they lose their, their sons and brothers and husbands and things when they die. It's a really unique perspective on that whole thing. I mean, I thought that the people who die would have had it worse, but I mean, the people who aren't dead have to live around to, to miss them. And then there's Jessica Valenti, who points out the real hard-hitting stuff about just society. You know, one year she'll say that she's really just tired of getting catcalled, being treated badly by, by, by men, just filthy, disgusting men in life. And then the next year, patriarchy will make her miss that when she's too old to be catcalled. So what is their shared opinion for today? It is that gun violence is a woman's issue. It's interesting that they mentioned that, though, because, I mean, I thought that uh, women usually kill their kids by drowning. Oh, wait, wait, wait just a second, guys. I reread the article. It seems that they actually mean that women are the primary victims of gun violence. At least this means that I won't need to keep on uh, quoting Hillary Clinton circa 1998 and I have a more up-to-date quote for her on this whole women suffer when men die thing. This is just such a dumb line of logic. I mean, that's like saying that the primary victims of sexual violence against women and rape against women and all of those kinds of things, the primary, the primary victims are men because their sisters and girlfriends and daughters and wives are the victim to those things and they have to deal with it. I mean, I'm not even taking her stuff out of context. Hillary Clinton literally says, I've met so many mothers on this campaign who have lost their own children. We owe it to them to protect our kids. No, you idiot. You owe it to the kids to protect the kids. The rest of the article seems to be Jessica Valenti's opinion. She brings up a couple of points over here, including that the majority of mass shootings in uh, the United States are domestic violence murders, and that 64% of victims in mass shootings are women and children. I'd just like to say, I hate the grouping of women and children together when posing something as a woman's issue. Because what was the gender of these kids? We don't know. We aren't told. I'll give a few examples about why this kind of thing can be very, very stupid. First, let's use an example that would fit into their domestic violence mass murder thing. A man finds out that his, his three kids aren't actually legitimately his own children. He starts drinking because he's just so depressed from the revelation that his wife has been cheating on him all these years. He then goes home one day, absolutely completely drunk and stuff. He then shoots and kills his wife and his three kids before killing himself. Now in this example, there are five total deaths. 20% of those deaths would be classified as adult male, and 80% of them could be classified as women and children. This is a serious problem now for women. It's a woman's issue because, as I've just said, this, this example has 80% of the victims of a mass shooting being women and children. What I didn't say, though, is that all his kids were boys, and so what happened was that off the, off the five deaths over there, 80% of them were male and 20% were female. And this I have just turned into a woman's issue. I could give a similar example of if I were to sort of change that into shooting up a classroom at an all-boys school with a female teacher and possibly excluding the shooter, you would have almost all the victims being classified as women and children. Neither of those was actually a real example, but it serves to show just how easy it is to twist these kinds of things to mean what you want them to mean, and how little information you can actually get from grouping women and children together. That is to say, when you're framing things as women's issues as opposed to women's and children's issues. I'll get back to that in a minute, but before that, the other thing that she brought up was that we also know that most women who are murdered by their partners or exes are killed by men using guns. 
And then the last couple of things she talks about are about how, you know, men are always the perpetrators of these things. Like there was this wrestler who took his own life after hiding a series of concussions because he thought was how, that was how a man should handle pain. And she talks about how the Orlando attack was perpetrated by a man who may have been struggling with his sexuality. Yeah, it's great that she blames all these mass shootings on men and stuff. Because, you know, it's not like in the first case, only a man died. And in the second case, the majority of the people who died were male. I really don't want to take away from the woman who died at Pulse and stuff. I mean, I've already done videos on Orlando and I've said how this is one of the greatest tragedies that's happened in recent years. But what, what Jessica Valenti is doing over here is completely erasing the men who died at Pulse because she's like, oh, well, a man did the shooting. Maybe it is true that men commit most of the mass shootings in the world and stuff. Maybe it's also true that women and children are 64% of the victims of mass shootings in the United States. And maybe it is also true that most women who are killed by their ex or partner have been killed by a gun. But I want to show you some numbers that are also true, and the kind of numbers that these people do not want to show you. First we'll look at the number of murders in the United States in 2014. That's the most recent year that's available. In 2014, 11,961 people were murdered in the United States. Now, Jessica Valenti and Hillary Clinton are both coming over here with their big numbers saying that women are like 64% or whatever. But now, let, let's look at this number over here, 11,961. If we want to frame this as a woman's issue, the number of female victims we are looking for over here is 5,981. That is to say, one more female victim than male victims. The actual number of female victims of homicide in 2014 in the United States is 2,681, less than half of half. But that's not entirely fair of me. I mean, uh, this, includes, this includes homicides by other means than just gun violence. So let's look at death by firearm. The total deaths because of firearms in 2014 was 8,124. Let's actually go ahead and say that literally every single woman who was murdered in 2014 was murdered with a gun. Now, let's subtract that number from 8,124, which is the total number of deaths by firearm. The number you'll end up with is 5,443. That would be the number of men who were shot to death if every single woman who was killed in 2014 was shot to death herself. You know what's interesting about that number? It's still twice as high as the number of women who were killed in 2014. Maybe 2014 was an anomaly though. Let's look at 2013. To go through this a little bit quickly, in 2013, just over 12,000 people were killed, 9,500 of them were male, and 2,707 of them were female. So that is more than a quarter of the male victims, but it's less than a third. If we're looking exclusively at victims of gun violence, male victims still double female victims. Again, that's assuming that every single woman who was killed in 2013 was killed with a gun. The other year I checked was 2010, and it was quite similar to 2013, where you're seeing female victims being a little bit more than a quarter, but less than a third of male victims. And if we're talking exclusively about gun violence, women making up a maximum of still less than half of male victims. My goal over here really isn't to take away from the women who have been killed throughout history. Any number of murders is too many, and we really need to work on reducing that number. What my point is though, I'm tired of this male erasure. You can't look at statistics like this, point to the smaller number of victims, and say that they are the ones who need the most help and that it's their issue, and we really just need to focus on reducing that number. New feminists put in a lot of effort in shutting down men's rights activists and trying to silence them and not letting them talk about men's issues. You know, there's important things to talk about, like the wage gap. Even if the wage gap existed to the extent that new feminists claim it does exist at, what is worse between women earning 77 cents for every 100 cents a man earns and 77 men being killed to every hundred people who are killed. I'd like to just summarize the kind of stuff that I wanted to express throughout this video. Firstly, 
I really hate how SJWs twist things around to fit their own meaning. If you're talking about statistics regarding women being killed, 65% sounds like a large number of something. But when you realize how many factors they've added in to get to that number, what I'm talking about over here is women killed by a partner or ex with a weapon, that being a gun, and that number is 65%. When I say that 77% of the people who were killed in 2014 were men, that's the number. Men killed out of total people killed. Secondly, people like Hillary Clinton and Jessica Valenti need to stop looking at every single thing as though it's a woman's issue. Women do have issues, so focus on those issues and let people who want to focus on men's issues focus on men's issues. That brings me to my third point. I really want to find a way to let men's rights activists talk about the issues that they want to talk about without getting, without getting no platform, really. If people like this are allowed to talk about their issues, which they bring up by heavily manipulating information, we should be able to discuss our issues, which have basis in reality. We shouldn't be told that we're derailing a conversation just because we're pointing out how they derailed the conversation in the first place. Lastly, even if most of the violent people in the world are men, please remember that most of the people who are on the receiving end of that violence are also men. And please don't just blame violence in itself on people being male or masculine.